So in the last video I showed you that we can multiply a really big 32-bit number against another really big 32-bit number and the result is more than 32 bits and so the CPU stores the uh, larger portion of the number in the EDX register and the smaller portion of that in the EAX register. I already told you that EAX, the A kind of stands for the accumulator register. Where hopefully you're seeing that uh, the EAX is implied here in the multiply and so accumulator we think of it as accumulator because we use arithmetic operations with the EAX uh, the EAX register and so the results of multiply and soon I'll show you divide are stored in EAX. Now EDX well the D stands for data I don't, I'm not sure quite sure why they chose data there but you can see here that it gives us the extra data uh, combined with the uh, accumulator register here maybe that's a stretch uh, but let me show you uh, Another thing with the EDX EAX pair. First of all, let's talk division. And um, I want to show you how division works. Works a lot like uh, multiplication. So instead of saying mole, I'm going to say div. S and we're doing integer division. We'll get to floating point types eventually. But for now, we're going to do integer division. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I take 9 and I divide it by 2, in grade school I learned that I can put 4 2s into 9. So I'll put 4 up here and draw my 8 down here because that's 4 2s would make 8. And so I'm subtracting 8 from my 9 here. And that leaves me with 1. Okay, now in decimal land, I put 4.5, but we're not in decimal land. We're using integers, counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the negative numbers as well, even though I haven't talked about negative numbers, but will eventually, I promise. Anyway, uh, so what do we do with it? Well, I remember in third grade, I just said, well, you got a remainder of 1. So 2 divided by, or 9 divided by 2 is 4, and if you care to know about it or not, it's remainder 1. Let's just... Uh, Let's play with that a little bit. Let's let's actually do that in code. So I'm going to erase this really big number. And let's put a 9. And let's put a 2 here. And then instead of saying multiply, I'm going to say divide. Which you can think of it as saying divide EAX by EBX. But again, we don't include the EAX because that is implied in the instruction. And that has to do with instruction sizes and things like that. But I don't want to get into that quite yet. Let's divide 9 by 2. And watch what happens. First of all, pause the video and think what will happen. Try to predict what will happen. Okay, I'm going to hit F11 here. Control Alt D, F11. And here we go. EAX, we're going to change that to a 9. So this will change to a 9. F11, very good. And uh, EBX, we'll change that to a 2. And then divide. I'll look at through the EAX in there for us. Divide EAX by EBX. So. Going off our gut instinct of what's happened before, uh, EAX will contain the results of this operation. So 9 divided by 2, EAX will change to a 4. Uh, but then where's the remainder going to end up? And I'll give you a hint, the remainder does end up somewhere. Can you guess where? Pause the video and think about it. Okay, I'm going to hit F11 and watch what happens. We, we know this will change to a 4, but what other registers will change? I'll hit F11. There's our 4, and oh, look... EDX changed to a 1. There is our remainder. So again, D stands for data, and, and with, when we did a multiply, EDX contained the higher 32 bits of our 64-bit result. But with a division, EDX contains the remainder. All right, so going back over here, instead of having a side-by-side -side result as we did with multiply, instead what we gain is... EAX, it has the uh, the answer, and EDX has the, I'll put answer here, EAX has the answer, but EDX has the answer, EDX has the remainder. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Now, in the next video, I want to talk about, well, 